Merry Christmas, everybody. Dear friends, on this Christmas Eve and always, grace, peace, and mercy be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text, really the Christmas Gospel, of course, but taken from the Christmas carol that we sang, not our last one, but the one before that. What child is this? What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping. This, this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring Him loud, the babe, the Son of Mary. This Advent, for those of you who weren't able to be with us every Wednesday leading up to this point, we've been talking about the long road to Christmas. A brief summary of that long road to Christmas would look something like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the Lord, and then falling into temptation and eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which they weren't supposed to eat from, lest they die and bring sin and fallenness into the world. They did, of course, and it brought sin and fallenness into the world. But from that moment, from the moment of their sin, God promised to send His Son. He promised at that moment that Eve's descendant would have a child, the Messiah, who would crush the ancient serpent's head. And that's where the long road to Christmas began. And that Christmas road, that journey down that road, wound and wound throughout the Holy Land and through, through all sorts of different cracks and crevices and difficult places. It took Abraham from his home in a land far away from the Holy Land with a promise only that God would take care of him and would make him a great nation. And that promise led down into the Holy Land. And it led after years and years to the birth of a child when the child shouldn't have been born to an aged couple that seemed impossible. And that long road continued through Abraham's children, through his great-grandchildren, those who ended up down in Egypt, and through Joseph, and through God bringing His people back to the Promised Land, establishing them in the Promised Land, all the while continuing to remind them of the promise first made in the Garden of Eden. And that long road continued. It continued through the prophets. It continued through the period of the kings. It continued right up to the day that the Savior, the promised, long-promised Savior was born. Now along the way, on this road, the second and third Wednesday of Advent, we talked about the signposts that God's people would see along the road. One of them was the angels. And we talked about how the angels' job pretty much solely was to look out for God's people and point them like signposts to the promise of the coming Messiah, the one God promised to send, the one He reminded His people He would send constantly, the one we needed more than anything, and the one who would come. The next signpost last week were the shepherds, and we looked at how the shepherds remind us of ourselves, humble people who don't necessarily have any standing in the world whatsoever, but understand their poorness of spirit, understand their need for the promise to be fulfilled and for God to bring His promise to completion, trusting that that promise would come and that all would be okay because of that promise. And now the long road to Christmas has arrived. And we're here together on this holy evening focusing on the birth of this holy child. It's where we get back to the hymn that we sang just a little bit ago. The first stanza of what child is this? What child is this that is the culmination of the long road to Christmas? What child is this that was sleeping on Mary's lap in that stable for animals? in that manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. What child is this that the angels pointed to, that the shepherds adored, 
and the dear followers of his have worshipped and loved and held dearly to for 2,000 years. This child is the same one promised all the way back in Genesis. This child is the same one promised in the prophecies. The same one promised in the litany that we read tonight, that 2,700 year old litany that talked about King David's throne having one who would sit on it forever, a son of, a descendant of David, who would occupy that throne for eternity, bringing peace to God's people. What child is this? It's the one that we hear promised that unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born. What child is this? It's the one promised by the prophet Isaiah. The branch of Jesse, the root of Jesse, the descendant of King David, the prince of peace, the one born of the virgin named Emmanuel. What child is this? The, the one promised by the prophet Jeremiah when he says that the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with my people and I will remember their sin no more. What child is this? It's the same child promised and spoken of in chapter 7 of Daniel who said, one like the Son of Man is coming one day on the clouds of heaven to take His people home. What child is this? It's a child spoken of in the fifth chapter of the book of Micah when we're told that Bethlehem would be the place that God's promise would be fulfilled. What child is this? It's the child that the resurrected Christ Himself, talking about Himself, says in Luke chapter 24, all of the Old Testament Scriptures, all of Moses and the prophets pointed you to Me. Dear friends, on this holy, this holy and quiet, this holy and sacred night, we have reached the long road to Christmas. We have arrived at our destination and we're here focused on the one Christmas is all about. But the road doesn't end there. The long road to Christmas didn't end at Christmas in that stable in Bethlehem. The long road to Christmas <coughs> in the end with the baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes and the angels proclaiming glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It didn't end with the shepherds coming to the stable and bowing down and worshiping Christ, the infant Messiah. The road continued out of Bethlehem. It continued for another 33 years. As Jesus grew, in wisdom and knowledge, as Jesus was anointed by His Father as our Savior, as Jesus literally took our sins, the sins of the world on Himself at His baptism, and then made His way finally to Jerusalem, to the cross, where He bore the sins of all, where He died as our substitute, where He took our place, to show us what peace with God really looks like. To show us that we finally do have reconciliation with our Father. And through that reconciliation, knowing that peace with God, we might have peace with one another. That child, what child is this? The same one spoken of if we would have sang together the second stanza of what child is this? Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. Nails, spears shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary.
Dear friends, on this Christmas Eve, we realize that we have traveled as his baptized children, as those brought into the family through faith, the gift of faith in Christ. We have traveled this long road to Christmas and to Jerusalem and the cross with him. But more importantly, tonight we realize he has traveled this long road for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.